Now for our last set, okay, blessings for last set po natin ito. And after sa last set po natin, meron tayong keto corrections po doon sa some of the questions po sa uh, set 1. Dalawa po doon at sa set 2 po merong isa, okay? So please view this video po kasi meron tayong keto corrections po sa dalawang question po doon sa set 1 at saka isa po sa set 2. Okay? So let's start with number 76. Which of the following groups of people would not qualify as participants in a phenomenological study? So saan po dito ang hindi po nag-qualify as participants doon sa phenomenological study? Okay. Pag phenomenological study po, ang hindi po qualify dito is letter D. Success stories of living entrepreneurs without any formal business education. Because phenomenological study talks about more on the phenomena or the series of events that is happening on that certain scenario or that area. So victims of martial law, comfort women during World War II, survivors of 2016 are all events po or are all phenomena except letter D. 77. For Florence to be able to ethically research among the ATAs, This will be the first critical thing that she must secure. Of course, if she wants to have a research or interviews doon sa mga ATAS natin, uh, ang gagawin po niya is to have consent from them at to have permission po sa NCIP or the National Commission on Indigenous People. So, both A, B ang dapat gagawin ni Florence po dito. 78. The reason why random sampling is not employed in qualitative research is because that random sampling po is just to have uh, the purpose of random sampling is not to generalize findings. Okay? So, uh, si, re, uh, the reason why random sampling is not typically employed in qualitative research is because The purpose of qualitative research is not to generalize findings to the larger population at an extent, but rather, the purpose of it is to gain an in-depth understanding of a specific phenomenon or experience. Okay, so with that, de ba? Ah, let's let's try to recall. Ano si qualitative research? De ba si qualitative research naman? I often involves in a smaller sample size rather than si quantitative. Meaning, the more quantity of data, the better the uh, analysis or the output is. But qualitative, it's just involved, involving lang po siya sa isang smaller sample size that is purposely selected to provide diverse perspectives and insights into the research question. So, from the question here, at letter A po ang sagot natin. Hindi po uh, natin ginagamit si random sampling kasi yung purpose po niya is not to generalize findings. 79. The Goldilocks principle in sampling is suggests that the sampling or the sample size must be from the word Goldilocks. It should be adequate. Okay, adequate meaning to say that it is neither too large or too small, but just right. In zakto punto lang po ang need po sa ating mga sample sizes. Okay, kung kung ano lang po ang need, kasi if we try to tend it to have more or larger samples, that will be a waste of time and money and effort. Kapag naman maliit din naman yung sample size natin at hindi yun sa uh, level po of uh, parang sa, uh, to be adequate, meaning to say, kapag maliit lang, magiging vague or extraneous yung uh, data or results po natin dyan. Okay? So, with here, an adequate sample size is one that is large, not enough, uh, large enough to provide enough data po to answer the research question. Okay? With confidence. Dapat may confidence talaga. So, sa 80 tayo. If students with average intelligence comprise the majority of the population of learners, then what sampling method must be employed if these are the targets, target informants of a study? So here the students have average intelligence comprises the majority. Po meaning to say it is just or this is just a typical case. Okay, typical case lang po ito na nag-involve of selecting participants who are representative of the typical characteristics of the population being studied. 81. Given that average students comprise the norm, what sampling method is ideal when a researcher would get students who are either just above average or below average? So meaning to say, we have the normal or the norm 
But si study po, ang, ang study po natin is to get either po above average or below average. So, anong case po ito? This is just a case of an extreme case. Hindi na po siya typical case. Extreme because we are not finding the norm but we are uh, going beyond po which is to have above average or below average po of selecting participants. Hindi na po tayo sa typical characteristics. Okay? Hindi na po yung hinahanap natin. 82. Given that average students comprise norm, what sampling uh, method is ideal would recruit students who are geniuses or those who are classified as severely mentally retarded. As samples for his qualitative study on learning abilities. Same as kanina, di ba? This is also a extreme case. Okay, extreme case po ito. Extreme cases, again, ito po yung involving of selecting participants who are at the extremes of the characteristics of the population being studied. Okay, population being studied. Okay, let's try to have yung 81 daw. Okay, parang critical case po ata ito. Given that the average students comprise the norm, meron tayong norm, at saka above average or below average lang siya. Okay, let's try to analyze ulit. Okay, balik po tayo sa 81 guys, kasi merong uh, correction po dito. So, again po ha, given that average students comprise the norm, what sampling method is ideal when researcher Walter would get students who are either just above average or below average. So, uh, hindi na po, hindi na po hinit po ni Walter po dito yung normal or yung average. That is the typical case po. And he, he wants to have the uh, students who are above average or below average. Meaning to say that the data na gustong kukunin niya is very, very rich po than the normal. Very rich kasi marami na pong uh, collected data. So, this is a case of medyo tumaas na po siya that is intensity case. Okay? Intensity case po ito. Hindi po extreme. Kasi hindi naman grabe na talaga na extreme. Yung extreme po dito is ito po. Ito po yung extreme, extreme case. Kasi yung sampling method niya ideally for geniuses and for those mentally retarded. Me to say, these are the outliers po from the norm. These are, these are the outliers from the norm. Okay? So I hope you have I hope na explain ko na po. Okay? Sige. 83. Observation as a method for data collection requires the use of the following senses among others except what? So ang hindi, ang hindi po kasali dito is si balance. Okay? Si balance po. Si auditory, syempre, at si olfaction kasama po 'yan po sa mga senses. Hindi po kasali si balance. 84. This is the greatest concern during an overt participation participant observation. Okay? Overt po, okay, overt, meaning to say that is Hawthorne, Hawthorne effect, okay. Uh, let's try to recall po Hawthorne effect, diba, nandyan na nasa Prof. Ed po ito. Si Hawthorne effect, nagre-refer po yan sa mga possibility that the participants are being observed may change their behavior or responses due to the awareness of being observed, okay. Yan po si Hawthorne effect. 85. Credibility. As an indicator quality in qualitative research is also non known as pag credibility po credibility is how you how are you being how you are being trusted so trustworthiness credibility trustworthiness 86 whether findings of a qualitative research is transferable or not is determined by this uh, determined by what okay that uh, nagdedepende po yan yung findings niya is nagdedepende kay reader Okay? Nagdetepende kay reader. So, yung transfer, transfer, transferability po refers to the extent to which the findings of a qualitative research can be transferred or applied to other contexts or settings. The reader here or the user of the research is the one who determines if the findings are transferable to their own context based on their own judgment and interpretation. Thus, ito pong si researcher can enhance transferability by providing a rich and detailed description of the research context, yung mga participants niya, findings, at sa mga ginagamit niya ng mga strategies. 87. Triangulation implies that in order to obtain the desired data and assure quality, the qualitative research must use more than two, more than two 
data collection tools. Okay, pag triangulation, we need to have two or more data collection tools. Hindi po researchers, hindi din po sampling method. Dapat isa lang po sampling method na gagawin nyo. Okay, pero madaming tools na gagamitin nyo for data collection. 88. A researcher's reflexivity is not assured by, okay, not assured by none of this. All of them are uh, ginagamit po yan, si audit trail, bracketing, at si memoing. Okay. Yung reflexivity po dito involves the researcher's critical reflection and examination of their own biases, assumptions, and values that may affect the research process and findings. Okay? While yung audit trail, bracketing, at memoing are techniques po that can support reflexivity, they are not enough on their own to fully ensure it. That's why, if you are a researcher, you should have self-awareness and you have uh, you should have introspection throughout the research process. Yan po yung crucial thing po when conducting a study. 89. Objectivity is to quantitative. Quantitative research as blank is to qualitative research. So, pag objectivity, quantitative siya. Kapag qualitative naman, dapat reflexivity. Okay? Reflexivity. 90. An audit trail is necessary to assure what aspect of qualitative research quality. So, ano aspeto po na ginagamitan natin si audit trail para uh, for what? For depend dependability. Dependability. 91. This is considered the best instrument in qualitative research. So, ano po ang best instrument na gagamitan natin for conducting qualitative research? Siyempre, interview po. Okay? interview. These are this is one of the most common qualitative data collection methods. Meaning to say, interviews po are great approach po when you need to gather highly personalized information. Okay? Si a focus group discussion um part po siya kay interview. Okay? Part po siya kay interview. But on a group role, group role po siya. So interview po ang best answer dito. 92. Qualitative data analysis or QDA as opposed to quantitative data analysis involves the following except what? Okay? Except ano dito? Okay, except po, wala pong exception. So, none of the above. Okay? So, pwedeng identification of patterns, pwedeng examination of patterns, at saka interpretation. So, uh, qualitative data analysis is to identify, to examine, or to interpret patterns and themes. Yan po yung qualitative data analysis. 93. The first process of QDA involves writing down impressions for the purpose of what? Okay, syempre, yung first process is needed para ma-assess natin yung quality sa data before analyzing it. So, alpha, assessing data quality before analyzing collected data. 94. As researcher Trina started to analyze her qualitative data, she came up with her own, her own set of codes for key points as they become apparent from the data she transcribed. These codes are classified as what? Okay. Ang nangyari po is nag-analyze po si Trina ng qualitative data at nag-come up po siya in, with her own set of codes. So meaning to say, nag-emerge po ang mga ideas galing po sa kanya. Therefore, this is emergent. Okay? Emergent po ito. Emergent codes are codes that are not predefined but rather developed by the researcher as he or she analyzes the data. 95. Researcher Carlo changed a code for a response from the informants to reconcile discrepancies in responses upon realizing that informants could have not known the answer to the next question because they were absent on the day they could have been made aware. What do you call this method of cleaning the data? So, in cleaning the data, from here, it is being logically checked. Okay? Answer is logic check. Logic check po. Ito po yung ang process na ginagamit natin para ma-identify at to resolve inconsistencies po, errors or missing data in a qualitative or quantitative data. Nag-involve po si logic check into uh, reviewing the data to ensure that the responses are logically consistent and accurate. Okay, logic check po. 96. This is the level of data interpretation in qualitative research when the causes or factors that may have influenced the results as described. Anong level pa ito? Level 3 po. Okay? Level 3. Yung third level po of data interpretation involves describing the cause and factors. Okay? The cause and factors po. So, it is a level of analysis na nina-refer natin as pattern interpretation or thematic interpretation that is involving looking at patterns, themes, and relationships doon sa data po. Let's have 97. 
as researcher Drew starts to interpret his findings, he found similarities of the patterns of events in the narrative accounts of his participants with the theory. Finding the applicability of the theory to the situation of some of his participants is under what level of data interpretation. So, anong level po ito? Level 4 po. Level 4. Yung fourth level po of data interpretation involves in interpreting the results and in the context of existing theories or research. So, in this scenario, sa question po nito, si Drew po is finding similarities between the patterns of events in the narrative account of his participants with a theory. Meaning to say, ang context po niya is do doon po sa existing theories po na ginagamitan niya. Or meron po siyang basis or foundation para makakreate ng uh, conclusion. Kung bali. Alright? So, let's have 98. This is an act of claiming or using someone else's written work without due permission or acknowledgement from its author. This is plagiarism. Okay? Plagiarism. 99. That part of the last chapter of the research paper where the findings are intentionally written in such a way that even one is not learned in technical research writing can understand. Okay, last chapter po, nandoon po ang findings na intentional, intentionally written. That is the summary. Kasi kapag summary, we need to see it, yung uh, choice of words natin at yung readability is dapat uh, makaka-understand po yung mga uh, elementary students kumbali. Okay? So, hindi dapat very technical yung summary po natin for uh, the other readers to understand. Okay? Yan po yung summary. Dapat not very technical. Na 100. These are the inferences that summarize the findings as the answer to what the central phenomenon is about. So, that is conclusion. Pag conclusion naman, dito na po yung mga technical terms. Okay? Technical na terms. 101. This section enumerates what should be done to improve a policy or an existing practice. So, uh, this is the way researchers, after po na makakonclude, they are recommending po, recommending on what should be done on the next future, okay? Or on the next future researches. So, recommendation po. Okay, recommendation. Let's have 102. Okay, 102. 102. This is a brief description of the overall research, how it was done, what the results are, and their implications. Okay? Ano pong sagot dito? Ang sagot po natin ay abstract po. Okay? Abstract po. Siya po yung brief, dis brief description of the overall research. 103. This is the last activity of the research process. Ano po ang last activity doon sa research process? Siyempre, we need to present the results. So, disseminating the results. 104. Disseminating the results may be done by, done by, okay, the answer is both. By reporting the findings in a symposium or conference or presenting the findings to concerned authorities for action. Okay, A and B po. Both po. 105. Researcher Rochelle decided to recruit as her qualitative, stu qualitative study in four months residence of Marawi. Marawi City because her study is about exploring the life experiences. Okay. She justifies that such displacement experiences uh, will give insights as how to be, to be called. So what sampling design must be, must researcher Rochelle adapt to obtain the ideal participants of her study? Okay. Ang, ang sagot po natin dito is dapat non-probabilistic kasi Live experiences, so real po, okay, real po. Yan po yung ang goal ni researcher Rowell dito. It should be non-probabilistic. So ito pong type of sampling na ito is known for as purposive or judgmental sampling, which is a non-probabilistic sampling design. 106. Okay, uh, ano po, same din po na question, pero iba po, ay, same na scenario, pero iba yung question. So, given that the plan for data collection, what is the ideal data collection method for this study? So, ano po ang dapat na data collection method ni researcher Rochelle dito? Siyempre, if she wants to have live experiences doon sa mga people na proponent niya, she should have focus group discussions. Okay, yan po yung ideal way of collecting data through focus group discussions. Okay, another question naman, the same scenario. What specific type of sampling must be employed in the same study? Okay. Ano po dapat ang gagamitin na sampling type po ni Researcher Rochelle dito? 
So, ang dapat niya gawin dito is to have stratified purposeful sampling. Okay? Stratified pur purposeful sampling. So, itong sampling, na sampling technique na ito involves in identifying specific subgroups or strata within the population of interest and purposefully selecting participants from each layer po or each stratum This is based on their unique characteristics or experiences doon sa Mara yung sa event po. Okay? Doon sa Marawi Siege. Okay? So, that's all for set 4 po. Now, let's have to uh, recall uh, recall back again sa ang mga key TACIP, KTC. Uh, keto corrections po sa set 1. Okay? Keto corrections sa set 1. So, let's start with number 13. Civil status affects the performance of teachers in performing their duties. To which of the variables does civil status belong? Okay. Ang hinahanap po natin pala dito is yung civil status. Hindi si performance. Kapag civil status po, okay, civil status dapat independent variable. Kasi ang dependent variable dito is yung performance po ni teachers. So, independent variable. So, wala po sa choices yung sagot. Okay. Wala po sa choices. Number 18. Salinity is a variable that affects the growth of seaweeds. To which of the variables does salinity fall? Okay, salinity naman, ang sagot po natin is siya po yung independent variable. Hindi po siya yung control variable natin. Okay, hindi po siya yung control variable. Independent po siya. Let's have set two uh, keto corrections. Okay, number 33. Written documents such as books, predicals, magazines, journals, newspapers, and legal citations are what type of sources? Okay, ang hinahanap po natin dito is type of sources. So, hindi dapat related literature. As mentioned ka on the set 2 po, hindi po related literature. Yung sagot dapat dito. Okay, sorry po. Ang sagot po natin dito, kapag ganito, yung mga written documents, sila ay secondary sources. Okay, secondary sources. Last one for keto correction, set, set 2. A written or visual presentation that explains either graphically or in narrative form the main things to be studied The main things to be studied, the key factors, concepts, or variables, and the assumed relationship among them. So, anong variable po ito? Sa key term po, meron tayong key term, siya po yung concept. Okay, concept. Meaning to say, hindi po siya on a theoretical basis. So, mali po yung nasagutan ko po. On set to po, hindi po theoretical variable ang sagot dito. So, ang sagot natin dapat is conceptual variable. Okay, conceptual variable. So, that ends the blessings po for science instruction research. So, please stay tuned po kayo sa physics bukas. Okay, physics naman, worth 150 items na naman. So, with that, um, I hope you have learned something from the uh, blessings discussion po. And I hope um, isi-share nyo po to sa mga friends nyo, sa mga Jesus nyo po. Kasi free naman po ito. At least, meron silang mga bala. So, please Share this to your timeline or to your friends po, yung mga group chats po ninyo or any group na pwede natin mapipresent yung mga ideas sa science instruction. Kasi ito po yung bago. Hopefully, meron pong lalabas na concept na nandito po sa 100 plus questions na binigay ko po sa inyo. So please share po and please don't forget to subscribe and to click or to hit po yung bell button, yung notification button para maging updated po kayo sa mga new set of questions po. Okay? So, again, please share po. Please share. Okay? So, see you po bukas para sa physics blessings po.